So I wanted to show you some of the updates that we've we've made on our waste oil stove that have really changed its characteristics as to how it works. The first thing we did is we got one of these off of Amazon. So it's a lot easier to go down and light that stove. They call it a weed burner. It works really good when you go down and, and light the stove. So if you made a stove, it comes in real handy. That's the first thing. Second thing is, is we've got it, we've made a different stock. So the original stock that we had on there, if you remember, you see all the little turbines at the bottom and how it was open and we drilled some extra holes in there and we had some holes in the stem and we've increased the size of our line but this was the old stock and we've made about five different ones and we've got one now we're going to show it to you that really makes a difference it makes a big difference on how clean it burns and how hot it burns and I mean it burns hot. So this has been in there running for almost 20 something hours. You can see where the carbon is built on the bottom of it. But you can see where it's burning white hot. So what we did was we built this little heat shield to help hold that heat down. And we think that we're going to build another one and put right around here so it holds the heat in the barrel longer and it makes it burn a lot hotter. But you can see we've upsized this line to a 3 8 line so it drinks it a lot faster as it's going down. I'll smash some of the carbon off the bottom of there so you can see this new propeller that we built on the end of here. You see how it, it almost looks like a miniature squirrel cage fan. And that's a 3 8 difference between the two. And we also, my son made this one, we also made this sleeve so that it would slide up and down the stalk so you can get the proper, the very proper distance between the, the stainless steel bowl at the bottom and the end of this sleeve. So what we did was we just put a little tack weld on there and we kept playing with it, moving it up and down until we figured out that we had it in just about the right spot. We're thinking that this heat shield, you can see it usually is glowing in there. And you can see it's not going to last very long because it's made out of steel. So we were talking about making one of those or making two of those and making them out of stainless so that it doesn't uh, it doesn't deteriorate because you can see that is going to deteriorate pretty fast but you can see where we put a clamp on either side and it's made in two pieces and it bolts together so you can slide it up and down your stalk until you get it in the right place but we're thinking if we get another one up in here and we keep it burning that white hot that's a pretty efficient oil burner when it's burning that hot I'm gonna pull that pull that bowl out there and let you look at that bowl like I said it's been running for quite a while I'm thinking 18 hours or better kinda of hard to keep track of time So when I pull the bowl out, you can see it in there, it's, it's burning completely white hot. That is white hot. It doesn't get any better than that. So if you're going to build one of these things, you really got to spend a lot of time trying to figure out your air to fuel ratio and also we're going to go back and make this out of stainless and probably put two of those in there. But if you're going to make one of these things, I tell you what, you can sure get a lot of good heat out of them. And the other thing, as soon as I get time, I'm going to show you 
is we build a filter crusher that when we change oil in a big tractor, a big truck, or something like that, I made a crusher that takes those filters and it completely crushes them all the way down to nothing and it catches all the oil that comes out of the filter in a pan on the bottom. So I crush the filters. When they're all crushed, there's no oil left in them, so they go into the scrap steel pile. The oil goes into the oil tote. After it sits in the oil tote for a few days, then we pull off the top of the oil tote to fill our waste oil. And uh, there's environmentally, it's not going to get any better than that. That is about as clean as you can get. And you get some good out of your waste oil. I was going to show you one other thing. When I put oil in my waste oil container, I use a filter in the bottom of this funnel. It's a very small little, it's hard to see I'm sure, but it's a very small little wire screen down in the bottom of there. I also screen it through one of these before it goes into my funnel, so it's getting screened two times before it goes into my waste oil. It really pays to keep all your oil clean. If you don't keep your oil clean, you're going to have a, a battle on your hands. So you want to really make sure you keep your oil clean. But we're going to clean this thing up. I usually just take a little wire brush and knock the end of that off. Take this stainless steel bowl and clean it up. And uh, put her back together and run it for another 18 hours or something like that before I have to clean it again. It's been sitting here running for about two hours now. Let's slide the lid open. I'm going to show you this inside collar that we put on it and what it looks like and how hot it is inside that stove. So you see that collar is blowing red hot right down there at the bottom. And there's not any smoke coming out of it at all. But it's blowing red hot. And it's putting out really, really, really nice heat. And if you look at the stream of oil that I'm running here, it's very minimal. But you really got to keep track of this thing because it will get away from itself and start running away. So you got to be very careful. Really putting out a lot of heat. A lot of heat right now. I don't know if I showed you or not, but if you look at a pump here, and both of my lines, you know, I'm not letting the pump run on uh, its regulated oil pressure. I'm just taking and bypassing oil back to tank. And then this stem here comes up and goes over, and, and that's what's dumping into my funnel. But understand that we're not pumping high pressure oil here and right now uh, I'm bypassing oil I got this little ball out here where I can open and close and bypass oil and keep my marks that I've got lined up here as to where it runs really sweet at you just got to play with it, but you never want to walk away from it because you walk away from it and you're going to have a problem. It gets really hot. This thing's screaming hot right now. And the other thing that becomes a factor uh, when you're running it is your oil level. So clear down here on the floor, you'll see that I've got a max oil level where I fill my oil reservoir to. And then when it starts pulling it down, it's, it, it starts to slow down the oil supply because of how far it's got to pump it. But on the other hand, if you've got hot air blowing on it or you've got cold oil and the oil is thick and cold and you start your stove and now all of a sudden your oil gets hot and it thins out, then it's going to get more oil. So you really got to pay attention all the time when you're running a thing as to, you know, 
What kind of flame you got going on inside that stove? There's no way to control a thing that I have tried to figure out, but there's no way to control it. You just need to make sure that when you're running it, you're here close to it and you pay attention to it. About every 10 or 15 minutes, I walk over here and I look at my stove, see what kind of a, <clears throat> see what kind of a flame I've got going on, see what my oil is looking like right here and pay attention to what's going on. The other thing is that the fluid temperature is astronomical. So what I like to do is is uh, I keep my fan on the top on all the time anytime I'm running the oil burner stove to keep that flue pipe cold because it really gets hot. Works well, but just so that you know what's going on there and I think I've already shown you the switches that I have so that the power turns off and it automatically shuts it down because uh, once it once it drops out it can't restart itself but a lot of little safety measures that you need to pay attention to if you're gonna make one of these and do it right they make a lot of heat but do not ever leave it run without you being there because I'm telling you, it's, it, it'll get carried away really quick depending on the temperature, the oil. There's too many variables to, to pay attention to what's going on. But you can see right here how much oil I'm feeding that furnace right now. And you can see where it goes in. The other thing that I really want to do is I really want to build a, a collar that fits around this and fits around it tight and come out here and go down into a bucket, so to speak, so that if anything was to ever happen that it would never spill oil on the stove and catch the stove on fire. So just something else that you really need to pay attention to because I'll tell you what, this thing is putting out more heat right now than this wood burner stove with the double barrel on it by far. I'd say three times more heat coming out of that than what's coming out of this. If you're interested in building one, I'm going to show you the components that we've used on the one we have now and the components that we're going to use on the next one because that's what these are for. But anyhow, this is a propane pig that's been uh, vented. The valve's gone out of it. We fill it full of water. We let it sit around. It's, it's ready to cut open. We got a 55-gallon barrel that we cut the lid out of it. The heavier the barrel, the better. Don't don't get a, a cheap, thin barrel. Find you a good barrel, and uh, I think I think it'll help you. So right here is a stainless steel bowl that goes in the bottom of it. You can buy them things anywhere. I think they're about fifteen bucks or something like that. This is an old used. Uh, oil fan assembly off an old fuel oil furnace and I I might use that one I don't know if I'll use that one or or if I'm gonna use this other one I like the belt driven blowers I think they do you know I, I just like them I don't like the one where the motors direct drive in the center I like the belt driven ones especially if you want to speed it up or slow it down this was a brand new one my fun my son found this one at an auction uh, I don't think he paid much for it, but you can see where the stock bolts in, and you can also see down inside here where the igniters are at. All that, we take all that stuff out of there. But you see this bolt pattern right here. And in this, we've already started making this. This will be part of our stock. We've welded this all in, solid all the way around. But uh, that'll be part of our stock. But just to show you... If, if you're if you're wanting to build one come uh, this winter we're going to take our time and we're really going to show you a lot more than just showing you the stove and how it works but if you wanted to start gathering up parts you know that's kind of the way I do things I'll think about something and then I'll gather up all my parts and the next thing you know I'll start building something